Shalom. Shalom Rastafari Ine. Ras Yadinos Tafari Ine. Greetings, I am Ras Ayadonis Tafari Yadinos Tafari of the Line of Jew Society of His Imperial Majesty. For more information, www.lojsociety.org. Now, this is an update. This is going to be just a brief update, and we hope and pray to go into a little more detail on this particular matter. This is for this Shabbat. Now, some may want to know and have questions about which reading, which reading is for which particular Sabbath. And we tried to explain it, and we have this downloadable right here um, under Sabbath House Readings at the website. Um, so last week we touched on Achar Remot, right? Hebrew, in the Hebrew um, Masoretic, more or less pronunciation is Achar Remot. Bamarinya, it's the 29th um, sabbatical reading and feeding. You'll note it right here on page five, right here, page five, right? Right, the 29th. Now the 29th, you see the asterisk there? You see there's the asterisk uh, roughly over somewhere right there, right? There's the asterisk. And then there's the, the following down there on the bottom, right? So let's just read that for a moment. It says, um, well, actually, it's at the, end of, at the end of the chart. It tells you, explains the meaning of the asterisk. And so when you go to page 7, page 7 right here of the PDF, right, right there, you'll see the black and black. And what does it say in black? It says right there, it says uh, bold. It says um, portions marked with an asterisk can be added to the following week's reading. Now, as you know, we're utilizing some of the online information out there from the other Jews, um, the faithful ones who at least recognize the importance of Torah and in a kind of a, a religious or faith-based sense are faithful. You know what I'm saying? This is before the Father. We may have these racial, white, black sort of issues, but getting beyond that, you know what I'm saying, and, and getting, you know, so we can live within covenant. We can live within the covenant, within the contract. Um, we can uh, reclaim and preserve our birthright. This is very, very important, both on a spiritual level as well as psychologically, and then physically in the so-called real world, materially, so forth and so on, so we can get out of this, um, you know, we black people should be as the Jews and so forth and so on. We are, you understand, but we have been suffering for 400 plus years the curses for disobedience, and that's as per Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68. Pay special attention to verse 68 where it says you should go into Egypt by way of ships, so forth, and so on. And then you can look at the back of the dollar and you see that pyramid there. That signifies I and I. Now, let's go forward with this right here for a moment, right? So the portion, right, it says right here, the portion, and we're in the Vayikra, Vayikra, the Torah portion, book three, with the compilations right there, right? Vayikra, right? And we're on page 289. Now, you can look up... Uh, Kedoshim, you know, you can go to the Wikipedia page, Kedoshim, you know, and you can follow along with those things there, or you can purchase a copy of this or download it, you know, it's your choice, but we put it all together in the book, the third, the fourth book coming out, right, and the fourth one, uh, Bemidr, or, Be, uh, or Bemidbar, you understand, which is numbers, is coming forward soon. So these two, Ahare Mot, which is the 29th, the asterisk is pointing to that fact right there. And Kedoshim, the holy ones, and you can see our last, our last uh, portion that we put up, you understand, touching on saint, what does a saint mean? Kedusan Bamarinya, Kedusan here, Kedoshim, holy ones, saints from, from the place we were quoting in Psalm 50 and 5, refers to the Hasids, and we want to touch a little more on the Hasids, as in Hasidim, because the link with Hasids, some might have asked, those who have purchased the, any of our books, they might have seen this here in the opening title pages, and they might say, well, that's Tahuti, that's ancient Egypt, that's rah, 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 being in ignorance, right? But we're going to explain the link with Hasid and Tahuti and Tahuti taught Tahut 
and how Musa or Moshe was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, and he was mighty in word and deed. So we have to connect that in order to know the truth. You know, it's in the fullness of the truth, getting out of the Western, the white, Gentile, European misunderstanding of our way of life. And here, the faithful Jews, white Jews, you could say Edomites, so forth and so on, but the faithful ones should be credited for their faith. As the scripture says, we should not hate Esau or Esau, because Esau is I and I brother. Now, does the Lord hate them? Does our father hate them? Well, yes, well, he has a right to, because he's our father. Honor thy father and thy mother, so that thy days be long on the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, here on page 289, right, it's the 30th portion, I made a, I made a, um, I feel I made an error. I should have told you all that these were connected. Now, for the students, the students might have been waiting for me to say that the disciples, the Dekam is Amorid, if you're really on the discipleship level, you probably record that and probably already start to read the next portion. So hallelujah for that. So you're already there. So what we're going to touch on is a little bit more on the Kedoshim, the saints. And we're going to connect that with the Ethiopian martyrs and the Ethiopian Holocaust. It's very, very important for us to um, understand that. So now this Parsha Kedoshim is combined with the previous Parsha Ahare to help to achieve the needed number of the weekly readings when we're in a year, a cycle, right, a cycle which is so-called common and not a leap year cycle. And we touched on how 2012 some might feel is a, is a leap year, but from a lunar, solar, or a Judeo-Christian um, and a Judeo-Ethiopian perspective, you understand, it is a common year. So these two are combined. In other words, you, the, the idea flows through, but we read both of those. We study it in context. So Ahare Mot, the 29th, Parsha, or Kufuk, and uh, Edoshim, the 30th, go together. You understand? Go together. Now, what was interesting, what caught our attention about this, of course, we pointed out that the Ethiopian, the faithful Ethiopians, speaking about the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, they are those martyrs. Now, of course, we know that May 5th, you understand, May 5th was basically just recently. You know what I'm saying? April, May, May, you know, we just very recently and May fifth is is Victory Day. It's it's Independence Day. Um it is it is a day which should be remembered by all of the faithful and true Ethiopian and Hebrews and, and all true Christian people. You understand, and true Jews who know themselves because that was very significant. It was a fulfillment of biblical prophecy, of biblical proportions. And it helped to open in that, in a sense, in a very dramatic sense, the book of Revelation. This sister here, Sister Imani um, Naya, I believe her name now, she has the Ethiopic name, Oleta Selassie. She has a page out there on the Internet. Go out and, and, and check out that page and, you know, support the sister. Keep her in your, in your prayers. Um, sister uh, Oleta Selassie, Sister Imani, she put this out a couple of years ago. Right, and this is the mystic path of Rastafari, the doctrine of African, um, of the African mono, monophysite, right here, right? This particular book right here where, where she's one of the first to really um, make a mission out of keeping the memory of the Ethiopian Holocaust in our hearts and our minds. You know, and, and then while studying from the Vayikra book, the Torah portion number three, our introduction and compilation. As we go to page, uh, the next page, you know, this portion is connected with Yom Kippur and the Day of Atonement. And for us in a messianic consciousness of the true Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, um, we know that his sacrifice, what's known in the world, um, or profanely as the crucifixion, we know that is the fulfillment of the true atonement, the one sacrifice, you understand, for all time. It seals up 
all of the previous. You know, we're at a higher stage in the Moshiach and in the true Christ. But we have to know the truth in order to be free of the lies and the deception that our adversary, who has deceived the whole world, has, has put out there, you know, saying, as stumbling blocks. But in the true faith, living in the covenant, those stumbling blocks become stepping stones when we return to our proper person, to the natural person in, 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 in spirit and in truth. Now, Kedoshim or Kodashim, is the name of, a, of the fifth order of what's known as the Mishnah, what's known as the Mishnah, the repetition of the law, the secondary. It's very interesting. We'll touch on that a little bit more. The, to, the Tosefta, the Babylonian Talmud, or the Babylonian teaching. Remember, the Israelites were in Babylon. So after that per, period of time, a certain set of interpretation came into um, the the theological dimensions of the Beta Israel, the Old Testament um, Jews, and then it comes forward to the New Testament, and then part of the conflict that Yeshua has with the Pharisees is based on this 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 um, this um, um, new or this tradition, this tradition which made void the law or the original interpretation from its true. Um, um, it's true Ethiopian Hebrew overstanding, all right? So we're going to go into details on that as well. Some of you already probably recognize that, but um, hopefully we will opine a little bit more on some of those issues. But they said right here that the term Kedoshim is sometimes also used to refer to um, uh, the 6 million Jews or European Jews, white Jews, um, who were murdered during the Holocaust, right? Whom some call the Kedoshim because they fulfilled the mitzvah, according to the Eurocentric interpretation. They fulfilled the, the commandment, you understand, or what's known as the Ten Commands or the command. They, they fulfilled the mitzvah, you understand, um, of uh, uh, Kedush Hashem, of, of the Holy the holy, or, or holy, the name, the name of the holy, the Hashem. Now, you know, for I and I, the Hashem is Kedamawi Haile Selassie. The name is the first power of the Trinity, the God of Abraham, Yishak, and, and Ya'ikob. Now, you know, there's the whole matter, and we're going to touch on it a little bit coming forward concerning the divinity of his imperial majesty. This is a very interesting theological issue. And the thing I want you to, to, to keep in mind, we as born again, as followers of Jesus Christ, of the true Yeshua, HaMashiach, and Spirit and Truth, who have been trans, trans, um, um, full, trans, trans, uh, how does it use it in, in the King James? Not transfigured, transferred, have, have, have crossed over, in other words, from the ignorance that we were in, not knowing our proper person, who we are, where we're from, our relationship with the Almighty God and our responsibility and blessing in covenant, in, in, in living in the contract, living in the Al Kidan, the Benai Barit. Um, are we... You understand, are we in the family of God in Christ? Have we been brought into the, the holy family of God in Christ? So are we in his divinity or out of the divinity? Are we, in other words, we are not more than our father. The father is before us. Our brother, Yeshua HaMashiach, is before us. But we're not the same as the world. So that means that we are in the divinity. We share in that divinity. It says, I have said ye are gods, all of you. But it's in a particular order. So this whole controversy, and even some of the ignorance among some of the Rasta brothers who are zealous concerning the godhood of his majesty or majesty as God needs to be dealt with as a theological issue. I could see why ones like Abuna Yisahak and others had some difficulty in, in explaining that, you understand, to our people, because there's some aspects of our people that they were not aware of and that we had not expressed. So, so you have to understand that we have to recognize who we are. Ethiopia is important. The true Ethiopia is important. You understand, but we are Ethiopian Hebrews. First, we have to come to our 
our our our consciousness or the consciousness of our um, national our, our race as Hebrews. You understand that so-called say black Jews, but as Hebrews, you understand that we and the Hebrew means to cross over as well to cross over. You understand and and truly we have crossed over, fulfilling the 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 word. You understand fulfilling even in the sense of mitzvah as well. Now some of us look at the um, the trans uh, Atlantic once again that trans word that trans Atlantic. Um, slave trade or the trans-Ethiopic ocean slave trade. You know, we look at that as a type of a holocaust or a holocaust as well. And it is, and it's very interesting to see the Gentiles or the Goyim that say that we black folks that talk about black liberation or anything that seems to reinterpret or interpret truly, rightly, holy scriptures from our experience in the light or the illumination of God, you know, somehow we are deifying. I read one page where one said, oh, they're trying to deify, you know, the black experience or, 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 you know, the black experience, you know, our sufferings, you know, we're trying to deify it in a sense. How do you deify that when we say that, that this was punishment for our disobedience? You understand? Because you see, that gives us the power. That gives us the authority. You understand? We are basically taking responsibility before God, the almighty God, and before man. So they would try any sort of, of, of Goyamistic distraction, you understand, to keep you, to, to put you off of the divine game. Because when you overstand the divine so-called game, then you really overstand and you overcome their earthly, temporal, and worldly game. game you understand? Now, um, this book, we're going to touch on a little bit more, the mystic path, you know, the Ethiopian Holocaust. But this is a reminder that Kedoshim, some of you all might be reading Kedoshim, um, and we take responsibility that we did not overtly say that these two are connected. You understand? So we're actually supposed to be up to the the 31st, the 31st uh, reading and feeding, which is um, known as Bamarinya um, Bele Nigaracho or Imor Amor. Amor, not the French Amor, but Emor, Emor, or Emma, Ama, Ama, means to speak. Now, this is kind of the key because Amor, Amar, because you have the Amirs in Arabic, you have the Amhara in our Ethiopian and, and, and Hebrew commonwealth, you have the Moors, and, and all of this connects. So we hope to kind of make that connection, first of all, in the language. You understand, in the language. So the Moorish, the Amharawi from a from an Ethiopian Hebrew and elect Rastafari perspective. Uh, we have the word Amir, and then we have the word here in the the Hebrew, and there is a parsha or a portion that touches on it. But since we're touching on Kedoshim, Kedoshim has two important parts to it. One is it continues this, this teaching and dialogue on kedisina, on holiness. Now, when we speak about holy ones, it comes to, from the word kedus. And the interesting thing about kedus or kedosh in the Hebrew is that we as Rastafarians that we grow our in our locks because of Numbers chapter 6. And Numbers chapter 6 points out that if a man or a woman you know, says, speak to the children of Israel, now, that many of the Rastas don't understand that the true Rastafari overstand the link with the children of Israel as per Amos 9 and 7, you see. And when we say the children of the Ethiopians, we're speaking about the faithful Ethiopians, not the careless Ethiopians or other tribalists, you understand, who fight against that holy covenant, the Al Kidan, the Benai Barit, that Ethiopia, faithful Ethiopia, has testified to for more than 3,000 years. This is to say that there's many Ethiopians that say they are Ethiopians, but from the divine covenant perspective, they are not in living within the contract. They don't live within the covenant. You, you see, those will be our domestic enemies. You know what I'm saying? Those would be our domestic enemies. It's like among the Jews. 
there are the faithful Jews amongst the Hasidims and others that oppose the state of Israel and the Zionists and the Rothschilds, so forth and so on. So there's a distinction right there, even amongst them. See, this is when you get to the spiritual level and you can, and you can distinguish the holy from the profane. Even amongst us as so-called, quote, black people or NBCs, Negroes, Blacks, and Colored Smith, Jones, and Johnsons over here in this, um, in, under occupation and in this confusion and 14th, 13th, 14th Amendment.